Christ Palace International Ministries. When people get too well, they think they don't need God. They have excuses. So, no, I have to work tomorrow morning. Why should I go to church? But when they get broke, yeah. they will go to church. That's how come people have the notion that those who go to church are poor and broke or they need help. Somebody was praying and fasting. Then the father went to him, what do you want? I'll give it to you. <laughs> Thinking that it's only people who need something who pray and fast. At times you can pray and fast because you love God. Amen. So look at the two categories of people. But look at what the man said. And the Lord said unto the servant, go out into the highways and the hedges. It means at every corner go. And compel them to come in. That my house may be filled. Now, look at the third category. He said that as you are going, don't listen to any excuse. Huh. He said, they, they give you an excuse and you told them, okay, it's okay, I understand. You're married, you can't come, I understand. You, you have oxen. Oh, wow, the Jaguar is nice. You want to test drive it, go. You bought the land, wow. Mercedes Benz, Maybach, beige interior. You bring it to church, all right. No excuse, you, go, you won't drive for vacation. All right, and it will come fast for you in Jesus' name. Amen. He said, don't, don't, this time, don't take any excuse. He said, compel. Now, I don't know if you know the meaning of compel. There's a force in compelling. Now, now, come, come to me. He's coming to me. <laughs> I don't have time, I'll show you a video. Compel is, for, the word is anakazo, is the forcefulness. Force them. Look at what the message Bible said. Now, now, don't look at me. I'm not reading my Bible. I'm reading what Jesus said. So don't say, should we force people? Jesus said, force people. The master said, then go to the countryside. He said, if they are not coming, then go to the country. If they are, there's still room, go to the countryside. Whoever you find, shall we shout one, two? Drag them in. No, 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 shout it. Drag Every them Sunday. Yes, drag them. Drag this is what we must be doing. Drag them in. <laughs> Who said it? Jesus. But some of us, will you come to church with me? I would think about it. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's on your own terms. No. It has stopped. Amen. <laughs> Tell somebody, drag them in. How many people believe the words of Jesus? And they believe this one too. If you believe this one too, I want to see your hand. I want to be sure you believe this one also. He said, drag them in. Jesus said, compel them. Now, now, of course, of course, right now, if you go to somebody's house and compel them like I described, you know they will call 911 for you. When they, when they can handle you, they will handle you themselves. If they cannot. But I want to show you an example. There's a way of compelling. The greatest force of compelling is not on the human body, it's on the mind. I repeat. The greatest force to compel is not on the human body, but it's on the mind. That's how come if you can program somebody's mind, wherever you go, they will follow you. You can even break free their physical bodies, but they will follow you. It's like a young man who is bad, who has managed to work on a certain lady's mind. And everyone is advising the lady, but the lady will always come to the man who is more treating him. The man has done a good job of compelling. Can I get a living amen? Yeah. <laughs> there was one army officer, so big and huge, he was compelled by a small girl. Second Kings 5. He's called Naaman. I want to show you how to compel people. Second Kings 5 verse 1. Now Naaman, he was captain of the host, an army of King Syria. He was a great man with his master. And honorable because by him, the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. By the Syrian, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And the, mist, the small girl said to her mistress, now look at something. A slave, you don't go to a general. Is somebody with me? The slave, you can't go and talk to any general like that. But the small girl knew, if I can convince the wife, the wife has power over the man. I repeat. If I can convince this woman, the woman will go in and whatever, the man can say no. So he went to the woman and look at how he said, hmm, I'm sure the woman, the, the young girl was working and washing dishes. He would go and say, hmm, waiting for the, what, the mistress to ask, what is happening? He said, hmm, this is serious. Oh. And he's waiting for a response, but the woman is not giving response. Hmm, then he would just drop the bow. Hey, pa, what is it? What is it? 
I've been thinking about something. If my Lord, your husband, if he can go and see the prophet that is in Samaria, I know God will touch him. I just know. But you, you don't have to do what I say. Just think about it for me. Why? He has sown a seed in the woman. And the woman wants the husband to be clean. Because anytime they go for functions, his husband is wearing long sleeves because he's a leper. He's just imagined the day my husband will come with short sleeves. And everyone will know that my husband is not a leper. I'm sure when the young lady left, ah, the woman said, Annie, I've got a solution. There's a prophet. We have to fly. No, it's seven hours flight. But if you can go there, your life will change. All the designer wears you have, you can wear from today. Are we ready? The man said, of course, I'll go. Now look at what the young girl did. The young girl compelled. He did not give an excuse. He did something. I'm a slave here. Can I do anything? From today, you will stop giving excuses. Amen. Your neighbors, your friends, you have to talk to them about this gospel. Amen. Now, now look at what happened. And the king of Syria said, eventually, the king went to, the, the captain went to the king. So, small girl, his message has climbed through the ranks, the captain, to the king. The king writes a letter, go to Israel and see. And these people, they were enemies. Oh my goodness. Verse 9. When they came, thinking that Elisha would come out, Elisha did not come out. So Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a message unto him saying, go and wash in Jordan seven times and your flesh will come again to thee and you shall be clean. Look at what happened. But Naaman was angry and went away and said, behold, I thought. He will come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Listen, the reason why you have to compel people this way is because most people who need Jesus, who need the Lord, they have their biases in life. This name has a bias. If I must be healed, I know how I must be healed. Some people need help. One prayer will change their life. The right church will change their life. But when you talk to them, they met a wrong prophet. So if you say there's another prophet, they will look at you up and down. They are all the same. They have sneak under the altar. They have, they want money. They, it's, it's money they want. They, they are all the same. You know, they, they are just manipulating you. So if you just say it once and you go, they have their bias. That's why you have to compel them that, no, can you try this one and let's see. Is somebody with me? No, 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 no. Oh, in the night, they do strange things. Oh, no. It's only a matter of this guy, he's wearing blue like that. You, you just give him time. No, no, I'm wearing blue. I'm talking about, not the blue team, please. I'm wearing blue. Okay. Is somebody with me? Why? Most people, it's, people have gone to their doctor and they have their bias. I was thinking you give me an injection. You know, growing up, some people, if you don't give them injection, they don't get well. So they will give them placebo, water but they will get well. If you give them the tablet, they won't get well. But if you give them water injection, they are well. People who need help have biases. They have gone somewhere, they, they were not treated right. They, in their mind, they think there's a certain way their problem is too much. What if? What if you don't give up and compel them? Now, look at what happened. Look at, the first work was done by the slave. This time, it was not the slave, it was the young soldiers. Are not Abana and Papa rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. So the guy traveled and he said, I'm going. No, 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 enough. I don't like this thing. How can you treat me that way? As he was going, look at what. And his servants came near. They were afraid. I'm sure they thought, should we try our boss? We're afraid we'll lose our job. Should we try? And actually, they were happy to go home because they left their wives at home and their family. So if, if you won't have Let's go. We all get to go home. But they said, let's compare this guy. And the servants came near and spoke unto him and said, my father, if the prophet had bid you to do some great thing, wouldn't thou have done it? How much rather than when he said, just watch and be clean? How did they compare? Mine. They spoke, can you just try it? You, you don't lose anything. Just pray and see what God will do. Just accept Jesus and let's see what God will do. Just submit your way. Just, just, just attempt the church. Just, 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 just. Because you never know what you get. But many times what we do is that I don't want anyone to walk with me. If you don't come to church, I don't have a problem. Stay where you are. 
ah, 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 ah. Can, can I pray for you? I don't believe in prayer, no, this, and we just give up. If you don't believe in prayer, just stay in your sickness. No, we should go there. <laughs> we should go the extra mile and compare, edge them, yeah. apply some force. Why are you applying force? Not because you want to hurt them, but you know the one you have believed. You know he has power. You know he can change lives. You know he can shape destinies. And look at what happened. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan. According to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. And he was clean. Now look at what is going to happen to this man. He returned to the man of God with his company. Behold, now I know that there is no God in Israel. The captain is praising God. And he said that when I go back, I won't worship any God again except my boss who says that I should go and bow. He said, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in the God of Israel. And who brought the chain? A small girl. Compel. And servants compel. In your compelling, your boss can be saved. I said your boss can be saved. Your best friend can be saved. Pastor, I have tried. Don't give up. Compel. 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 Now this is easy to do that. All you have to do is put a message on your WhatsApp status. They will read. If you go to them and say, that, can I preach the gospel? They will not. Put a, a Bible verse there. Put a message. Pastor Mark preached a message. A certain pastor preached a message. Put it there. As he are reading, they, the Holy Ghost will take over. One day, God wanted to bring quails to the camp of the Israelites. And look at what they did. Numbers 11.31. All you have to do, which I want to encourage you to do, you might not know the gospel. You might not be able to articulate, but do this one thing. He said, And there went forth a wind from the Lord, and brought the quails from the sea, and let them fall by the camp. Strengthen. The wind went to the sea. See, normally talks about multitude in the scriptures. Then it brought the quails. When the quails came, they did not come into the camp. It came close to the camp. I repeat. The quails did not come into the camp. It came by the camp. So they had to go and pick it. What God will do is that he will bring people your way. The friend you got, the one you met, you sat in, in the plane. It is a wind from God which has blown them to your camp. Will you ignore them or you pick them like the Israelites pick the quails? Some of you, what you have to do is that maybe if you talk to them, they won't believe. Just bring them to church. And trust that one day, pastor will preach a message which will change their lives. Yeah. Just tell them, just come, just come, just come. Just come. The, the woman, the sometimes woman changed the whole city. And you know her message. Come and see. Can you imagine? Come and see. Come and see was powerful enough to change everyone. When they came, later they went to the woman and said that, we have believed not because of what you said, but we have heard the words and we too have believed. You don't have to preach the whole gospel to everyone. Invite somebody to church. Share the link to somebody online. Tell them to come and see. I, re I was reading the, the testimony of Sister Ariel. And it's one of my best testimonies so far. I like it. Anytime I read it, I'm motivated to do it. Can I, can I read it to you? What if the person did not invite her? What if? Thank you, Jesus. Look at what she said. She's the one projecting right now. At one point, she was not a church member. But look at what she said. Shalom, Pastor Mark. Thank you so much for your prayers, encouragement, and guidance throughout 2022. The devil made a mistake when he allowed me to walk into Christ's palace. He said, the first day I came to church for Thursday service, the miracles and prophecy were great. But what really got me was the teaching. Now listen to this. A few years back, I had gotten fed up with not getting answers. I was asking about Jesus, the ministry, and Bible in general. I actually decided I could not find, I could find another religion that would be able to explain it. So this lady is giving up and said that, I've given up. I want to just go and join another religion. He said, I had no doubt about God. And like everyone else, I memorized all the memory verses. But no one will explain it. I called around and settled on the Baha'i faith. So he picked up the phone and called Baha'i faith. And look at what happened. Which they mix Judaism, Islam, Christianity, and Buddhism. I had even called the temple to see if I could get an appointment to come in. It's not a movie. It's real life. But God had other plans. 
that, time, that Thursday, as soon as I sat down, you just started talking about Jesus and Buddha and Muhammad, that they were not the same. It was eye-opening. You answered the question I was running around town to find. And that was, wasn't even the sermon for the night. It was the, the intro. How do you call it in food terms? Appetizer. That, re <laughs> that revelation alone has changed my life. I will forever be grateful for that insight. It was such a simple and short explanation. It seems so ridiculous that I never knew that. But you broke it down and made it digestible. That one word was the catalyst to change my relationship with Jesus and set me on the correct path. Thank you for not just yielding yourself for prophecy and miracles. Thank you for that advice. But for teaching the fundamentals. I wanted to appreciate your dedication, sacrifice, and grace. Now, let's clap for Jesus. Now, who, who, who invited you to check? Can you please come? Who invited you? Who invited you? When we go to heaven, the person who invited her will get the reward. Not the one who just preached. Because if somebody did not say, just come, come and see. There, there, a man can explain this to you. Come and see. Now, she's, she's been doing the projection for us. Amen. Let's celebrate Jesus. Who, who invited you to church? Uh, it was one of the nurses at my job. She used to come on Thursdays for prayer. And, and she's not even and here. She's not here. She just said, come for prayer. And I was just looking at her like, I'm tired. I've prayed before. For, so I was yeah. like, no, 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 this one, just come. This one is different. Just come. So as I got home, uh, my dad. Face, face the ground. Yes. As I got home, my dad was like, you're going to church again because his service is on Wednesday. Yes. And we're already gone from Wednesday. So yes. I was like, okay, let's just go. Amazing. So I didn't even change. Just yes. picked up everything and came in. And Amazing. Then, and that was, was it. Happened. Amen. Then the other miracles with which we are not ready to talk about right now. Yes, For two, let's celebrate Jesus. Take your seat. Now look at the nest. The nurse has not been here. Say that. Just go and see. All I'm requesting for you to do is come and see. Come and hear. When they come, the outcome, leave it to me and God. I repeat. Leave it to me and God. Just invite somebody to church. I saw a post the other day. Somebody said, sit by your soul service. I said, I think it's a good idea. One day you sit by the person you brought to church. Now somebody said, ah, the room is already full. How do you sit? Leave it to me. We will run two services very soon. As we are building our temple, we'll be running two services. Somebody said, Pastor, won't you be tired? I've made up my mind. I've dedicated Sunday for God. All I want you to do is that be a, a gospel preacher. Do the work of an evangelist. And all you have to do is tell somebody, come and see. Come and hear. When they come, they themselves will have. I cannot tell you. Listen, do you know that right now on the social media, People are recruiting people to become suicide bombers. Number two, people are recruiting people to join the L K T B T. <laughs> I don't have to say before before they highlight the, the video. <laughs> people are recruiting people anxiously. It's a gospel crusade people are doing. Now, if you go to a good restaurant and you like the food, maybe you went to Longhorn. Or or like what a beggar number six. Like they say, I, I said it and people went to try it. And they enjoyed it. In the same way, <laughs> if you ever meet good food, yeah. won't you tell somebody to come and taste it? Yeah. The word of God, the Bible says, and I'll give you pastors after my heart who feed you. So the word of God is full. If you, some people, you switch from Android to iPhone because somebody convinced you iPhone is better. Three of us. Now, now, if they could evangelize iPhone to you. Why don't you evangelize the word of God? Amen. Do you know, I was a small boy and I heard an ad, I saw an advert, 555, five, five. you know 555? Five, five, five. Cigarette, tobacco. <laughs> I said, I saw the advert. It's, it's an advert. <laughs> now, people believe in 555 five, five. and they, are, they pay money to advertise 555. Five, five. And string enough, they will write under 555. This thing can cause lung cancer. They are advertising lung cancer. What will you advertise? Maybe you don't like all that we do in this church. But advertise the good one. Don't say the bad one. Don't say the bad one. Someone say, there's something bad at the, the church you came from, there was something bad there. Every church you go to heaven, there will be something bad. Don't talk about the bad one. Is somebody with me? 
advertise something. Because when they are advertising 555, they will write the lung cancer small. So in the same way, the bad one, write it small. Isaiah said, there's one demand in heaven. And it has been an eternal demand. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. Today I came with a clarion call from the master. Who will God send? Online, in person. Who will go for us? I pray that only two people, three people, hopefully everyone agrees that they will go. Will you be the one to go to your friends and your family? One day we'll get time for people to share testimony. I called somebody the other day. The person was crying how his life has changed. And they were crying. And in the time, I had tears would well up in my eyes. I said, God, grace to do it more. What if you did it? What if I continue to do it? I'm sure heaven will be populated and help landed. As we pray today, some of you can preach to the children. You can talk to a friend. You, you, you might not stand here to preach, but there's something you can do. There's a hymn which I love. Let's sing it. Had the voice of Jesus calling. As we are singing, if you know how to sing, sing it. The Holy Ghost will work in your heart. If you cannot sing, pray to God that God, I'm willing, I'm available. Anyhow, use me. Lift up your two hands. The fields are ripe. And the harvest is waiting. Who will bear the sheaves away? Long and loud. The master is calling you. Rich reward. I pray somebody will answer today. Oh, here am I. Long and loud. The master is calling somebody. Rich reward. Let me read to you one of the two stanzas. He said, If you cannot speak like an angel, if you cannot preach like Paul, you can tell of the love of Jesus. You can say he died for all. If you cannot rouse the wicked with the judgment dread alarms, you can lead the little children to the Savior's waiting arms. Let me read this one. If among the older people you may not be up to teach, feed my lamb, said Christ, our shepherd. Place the food within their reach. It may be that the children you have led with trembling hands will be found among your jewels when you reach the better lamb. Lift up your right hand. As we sing that song, I want you to make a pledge to Jesus. That God, Use me in this end time. I just want to do something for the kingdom. You want to pray now and say, Father, I receive strength to do your will. Baptize me with fresh zeal, fresh passion. Lift up your voice. Lift up your 30 seconds. 30 seconds, we are done. Lift it up. Strength from above, grace from above. Strength from above. Grace from above, strength from above. Father, baptize your church. Release upon your people online in person. A zeal to go. A zeal to go. A zeal to compel men, men to come in. Leve go bandelize zigahat. Babakadiende visus. Oh, fresh zeal, fresh fire. Fresh aliando si mahana magiatosas. Infeli manana. Divine strength, divine ability. Divine energy. Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your right hand and repeat after me if you can. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus today, is my day. today is my day. I have responded, I have responded to, the to the clarion call to speak, to speak about, Jesus about Jesus and his kingdom. And his kingdom. I, receive I receive strength and grace. And, grace. and, I, walk and I walk in that grace, in that grace and, strength. and strength. I will not die ashamed. I will I will shine like the stars of heaven. I will shine as the brightness of the firmament. I receive that grace again to be an evangelist. To do the work of the evangelist in the mighty name of Jesus. Christ Palace International Ministries.